welcome to another episode of Render Review. We've got a lot of really good submissions to get through. Before I do that though, quickly wanted to say thank you to everybody for subscribing and hitting that notification icon. That really helps me out. And of course, an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of this video. Incidentally, if you are interested in supporting the channel, feel free to visit the Patreon in the description down below. Or you can become a member of the channel by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button. If you want to make a submission to render review, get me to go over one of your pieces of work. You can find out information on how to at thundaunt.com. So this first submission is from Steve Howe. As you can see, it shows a multi-headed turtle armadillo style dragon style beast uh, chasing after two characters, the male characters carrying the female character on his shoulder. Overall, composition's not too bad. You can certainly get the sense that the characters are running away from the monster. There's a couple of items that I've observed already that I think I would have changed had it been me. But looking at the good side of things, what we can see is if I just grab my snazzy pen, what we can see is that there is good contact with the character's hip or bum there where he's picking her up. The downside to that is that there appears to be a little bit of a, I want to say misalignment just there where it is. You can see that his arm is down. She's sort of hovering above his arm ever so slightly. It's a minor niggle, but it's the kind of thing that you can work on. Yeah, just to make your renders look a little bit more realistic. The lighting in the scene, you can see that there is a distant light source, but what we've got here is what happens when you don't turn off the camera headlamp. Is as you can see that the image looks quite flat and dead because the light is coming straight from the camera source. So you can you can identify that particularly around the shadows here and the shadows on the face. You can see that the because the light source is coming from the camera, it makes the image look flat. So I would imagine that that was probably just a minor oversight um, because you do have other light sources in the scene. You can see them reflecting off of the character's helmet and off of this character's boot here. You can see light there and you can see light there. So what I would advise you to do in future is just check that your camera headlamp is switched off so that you don't get this kind of flat dead lighting effect. Depth of field in this there isn't any basically i'm not saying that's a bad thing or a good thing obviously it's entirely up to each person how they do it i feel like because there's no depth of field in it the image lacks a little bit of depth you've got no real sense of how far away these characters are away from the monster and how far away the monster is from the tree line behind it for a chase sequence blur is always a good thing it gives you a feeling of motion so if you have a little bit of depth of field it doesn't have to be loads it can be just enough to sort of slightly blur out the character or the monster and then blur out the trees and then that gives you a feeling of depth and then maybe have a little bit of motion blur in the foreground grass. It just gives you the sense of motion. But all in all, it's a really good quality image. I'm really happy with it and I think, Steve, you should be as well. So good effort there, my friend. Next entry is from Mr. Creepdom. As we can see here, it's a uh, young lady holding a gun. Um, really effective lighting here. I really like the dramatic light. You've got a nice bit of post work here, which has created that light glow on the left hand side. She's making good solid eye contact with the camera and she's got quite a stern expression on her face. The hair is nicely draped over the shoulders. There's only a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of clipping there which is really nice to see. So it just that kind of thing for someone like myself who's looking for these fine details kind of breaks the immersion. So the fact that there's so little there is really good. Um, the grip, this is the only part for me that kind of is is bad about the image. And I say bad, I don't mean that in a, in a mean way. Um, the lighting is really great. Everything is good. It's just the way that the gun is sitting in the hands. As you can see, there's a bit of clipping there and the hands they are making contact but they don't look like it doesn't look like this hand is supporting the hand above it um it looks more like it's just there for decoration that's um and the finger is hovering away from the trigger um 
you know those are those are the kind of fine details now that we need to be picking up on because you've managed to nail the lighting and the eye contact and the clothing and the hair really well so that's really awesome but um you know so you're at the level now where you need to be starting to pick up on these fine details here realistically um just to take your renders up to the next level but overall this is a really solid image i get a really good creepy kind of vibe from this it looks like she's just come down into a basement to hunt zombies or something um no i'm, I'm really digging this image so yeah that's a really strong effort absolutely 100 percent eye contact is great you've got a little bit of a catch light there from whatever light source you're using up here so that it adds that little bit of gleam in the eyes just there and there you can see you know where the eyes are you don't need me to draw circles for you <laughs> but yeah no overall really solid image mate well done good effort on that one next up we've got miss fortune who's got a young lady reading a book and it's again we've got a nice solid light source here that's lighting the back of the book and the front of her face which is really nice it's a fairly stylized character this one so it's kind of that that style of character that's sort of halfway between anime and real life which is is certainly an interesting art style I, I enjoy it we've got a nice depth of field in the background as you can see the movie uh, trailer going on on the tv screen up there a nice bit of light in the background there just sh shining some light on the wall behind it depth of field use right here is really effective because it draws you to the character's face uh, i assume she's sitting in a coffee shop or something like that reading a book reading the conversations of socrates so a bit of light reading there <laughs> always i never make it through plato either i, I struggle with it because it's just it's it's so there's like a wall of text you have to take it in bite-sized chunks nice piercings on the character's face good eye contact with the book and that's a very important thing is you she actually looks like she's looking at the book and she's not sort of giving us a glazed over expression looking at something off camera so there's obviously been a bit of attention paid to making sure that the character has actually got eye contact with the object that she's looking at and it's attention to detail like that that's really important in this kind of shot because there's not a lot going on in the shot the people looking at it they're either going to look at it for two seconds and move on because there's nothing to see there or they're going to overly scrutinize what's happening and so having eye contact looking at the book and things like that is a good way to sell the image for sure liking the uh the headphone cable there's a little bit of a weird kink in the cable just there might be perhaps something not something necessarily that you can do anything about but it's something that kind of stands out upon closer inspection of the image the book is resting quite nicely in the hand um because of the camera angle it's an easy fake to sell because you can't see where the thumb is so you just kind of have to assume that the thumb is holding the book into her hand and then there's no major issues there apart from a tiny little bit of clipping in the thumb through the coffee cup either that or she's squeezing it too hard because she's reached a really stressful part of the socrates or socratic conversation which is understandable because socrates was from all accounts an annoying bastard okay so overall really good image well done for that misfortune really pleased with that i think you should be too keep up the great work Last image for today is going to be this image from Eric Gaziorowski and it's a young lady sitting on a motorbike with a some kind of uh, futuristic concrete wall behind. Now arguably you could say that there is not a lot going on in this image and that's not necessarily a bad thing. The fact is that it is some kind of street, you've got a dumpster there in the corner which is obviously indicative that this is outside. So it looks like it's some kind of futuristic bunker in the background nice bit of blue light there just to give you a bit of a change of color red and blue contrast really well that's why police cars use red and blue on their sirens so we've got the nice orangey red light over here the blue light over here so it throws a nice bit of uh, contrast in between the foreground and the background and it means that using depth of field in this case wouldn't make a huge amount of difference because you can see what is the foreground and what is the background overall she's posed really nicely on the bike clever use of cropping basically because you can't see whether or not the bike is on the floor or whether her foot is on the floor which helps you sell the illusion if perhaps the female character isn't proportioned well enough to fit on the bike or perhaps her high heels are too long or something like that so 
having those off shot or off camera can be a really good way of continuing to sell the image. Good overall contact with the bike as well. It looks like she's actually sitting on it and she's kind of sunk down into the seat a little bit. So that's really good. Overall, I like the pose. There's a little tiny bit of clipping just there, which is something to be watchful about but that might be the character's costume that's creating that. Overall, it doesn't really spoil the image for me. Sometimes clipping really does ruin it, but in this case it doesn't. Because it's so barely noticeable, I only noticed it as I was scrutinizing this area of the character. So if, you, if you're if you passing this shot in front of the player of your game for a few seconds, they're not probably going to notice something like that. Again, good use of shadow because the shadows are so dark you can't really tell whether or not the character's foot is making contact with the bike or if it's clipping through it and it's the same with the sniper rifle that she's got there because it's positioned behind her you have no real indication as to whether or not there's clipping or if she's actually holding onto the rifle in any way and that is a again very clever use of composition of the shot basically because as i said it's easy to believe the shot because you can't see anything wrong with it upon closer inspection you could argue that maybe you should be able to see the hand holding the rifle but it doesn't matter in this shot because as i said it's really good really good uh, overall image hair isn't clipping into the back too much or at least where it is you can't see it because again it's tucked behind the back so as you can see there's no visible clipping in shot and that's really one of the main things about selling a good image like this is if you can't see the thing that's wrong then you just have to assume that it's not there we call that suspension of disbelief and so on and again the bangs uh and the uh, not the bangs sorry the the strands of hair coming off the side of her head again not clipping with the body so good shot eye contact she's looking at something over that way which is nice um the light source is over there as well which is another little trick that you can use when you're composing your shots is if your character is looking at something off shot, have the light source from that general direction and that will create the illusion that there is something over there that she's looking at that's very important. And again, really useful sort of tip there for other people if you want to create really effective looking images like this. So again, really great image. I would be overly chuffed with that if I were Mr. Gazirowski thanks very much for that submission much appreciated my friend okay folks so that wraps it up for this video again thanks ever so much for your submissions there are more to come if you do want to submit an image feel free to visit thundorn.com for guidance on how to do that and i will look forward to seeing more images but overall a really solid solid quality of images from this episode so thanks very much guys and i will see you in the next one but until then you take damn good care of yourselves all right Bye-bye.